Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Tuesday, April 16th, 9.15 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Two plasma filaments or coronal mass ejections are going to cannibalize and strike Earth in less than, well, in about 24 hours. And that could mean geomagnetic storm on the 17th. Keep calm. It's boom time. Parts of central U.S. hit by severe storms today while tornadoes strike in Kansas and Iowa. Ping pong ball size hail was also reported in Bloomfield, Iowa. And a tornado watch is expiring for Iowa after tornadoes were touching down. Here we can see a video of that, courtesy of Jennifer, Jennifer Rutzel. And more than 20 tornadoes, in fact, reported as tens of millions face a severe weather threat for another day or so. Take a look at this tornado. Luckily, it's in the middle of a farm there in a field, so... 20 tornadoes reported today, and, well, those storm chasers, they were busy. Here's the hail map for Monday, April 15th. 36,749 impacted by one inch or larger. 45 impacted by 1.7 inches or larger. So the hail is continuing to pound us, as well as the lightning. This is a shot from Richmond, Virginia, yesterday. Some spectacular lightning happening in this region. All the links will be below. Just an amazing amount of lightning here in Richmond, Virginia yesterday. 45 million now from the plains to the Midwest face severe thunderstorms as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday. Severe thunderstorms and fire weather threats in the central U.S. today. Strong storms in western Alaska. There is an enhanced risk level three of five for severe thunderstorms today with threats for significant severe hail, tornado potential over southern Iowa and portions of Missouri and west central Illinois. Elevated to critical fire weather is possible today due to gusty winds and dry conditions over parts of the southern high plains and northeastern Montana. So heed the warnings and don't flick your cigarette butts out the window. The severe weather threat is going to continue for another day or two. Here you can see storms blowing up Thursday and into Friday in the central U.S. And then through the weekend in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. But the big winner, chicken dinner. Take a look at this. Is the snowfall total coming for the Northeast in this 10-day outlook? Look at that. That would be record snow for Boston at the end of April, as well as Pennsylvania and southern New York. That would be an amazing event. And southern Maine, it's insane as... More snow for the West and an interesting storm developing for the Northeast that could deliver, well, quite a high impact for the weekend, well, in just 10 days. Now, big news being released. La Nina will make a comeback this summer as El Nino finally fades. The triple dip El Nino is over as La Nina will be king by June, in my opinion. The revised forecast issued by scientists have been revealed, and the verdict is clear. La Nina will be making a comeback in a big way. Hey, hey. Uh, before we get to that, let's open this image and show you the ENSO forecast through the rest of the year, and it's showing very high probability starting in June of La Nina taking over from El Nino as El Nino is dropping off a cliff. We'll be neutral for May into the beginning of June, and by June we should be in hard La Nina. Now, typical La Nina impacts uh, in the summer include more hurricanes, which we haven't seen in a while, for the Caribbean, as well as the Gulf, and fewer hurricanes coming in towards Mexico from the Pacific. Here is the winter outlook for the variable polar jet and the blocking high pressure, as well as the summer outlook. It's typically drier in the southwest, wetter in the Pacific northwest, colder in the north, 
and wetter in the upper Midwest there. So we could be looking at a dry summer for Florida, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Southern Cali. Heads up. Now, international weather was crazy today. Dubai saw five inches of rain falling in 24 hours, which is an inch and a half over the annual rainfall. And this is the airport. Absolute insanity in Dubai. And this is all on our Twitter channel. So if you want to come check it out, breaking news all day here over at Twitter, including some enhanced satellite here of what happened over Dubai. Look at that explosion there over the United Arab Emirates. Very spectacular supercell exploding over a huge region. We also have tornado coverage, some cryptocurrency coverage, and take a look at this. This is what happened today in Xichuangjiang province during a bow echo this morning. That's when a series of thunderstorms uh, come in. And wow, indeed. That is absolutely terrifying. I hope no one got hurt there. Also, we're seeing record, maybe all-time record-breaking hail. Take a look at this. Could be going down in history. Also in China, a uh, massive hailstone. That looks like... It's bigger than his hand there. That looks to be about six or seven inches there. And I do believe I have some other hailstones coming from, look at that, coming from China. Oh my God. As predicted, 10 years ago, hail will be increasing to deadly sizes as we're seeing now. This is even larger fist size hailstones in Sandu, Gingjuin province this evening which was yesterday evening, some measured 12 centimeters in diameter. Sadly, a duck did not survive this hailstorm. Our prayers go out to the duck. That's a runner duck, by the way. Seismic update. Interesting quakes of note. Today, we've got a 5.0 in the Camp Chakta in, the, in Stari, Russia. Moderate activity and uptick in four magnitude worldwide. Most recent quake just kicking off 4.4 in Loreto, Mexico. Up at the surface, 10 kilometers. So a lot of people felt that rumbling. As we move on to worldwide volcano news. On the 14th of April, a se sequence of minor earthquakes commenced at Lagafell, situated just northwest of Grindavik, where the eruption is happening now in its 32nd day. The activity has subsided, but uh, this could simply be due to the huge amounts of lava that have been pushed out over the last month. Ibu Volcano, above average explosion, sent ash up to 10,900 this morning, and that's not the biggest eruption of the day. We'll get to that. Semeru puffing and passing today. <coughs> Ruang is the big winner, chicken dinner. <coughs> Excuse me. We can see here volcanic ash to flight level four zero. That's 40, it's 4,000 feet. That's the initial puff. It's going to come back into the picture later today. 23,000 feet for Sabancaya, 15,000 for Raventador, 16,000 for Fuego. And here we're going to come up again on Ruang with a major blow. A high-level volcanic eruption today from Ruang Volcano up to 30,000 feet and moving west. The biggest eruption in some time, and that is just fine. As we're keeping a close eye on what's going on in the Recanis Peninsula, probably subsidence due to the amount of lava leaving the ground, creating a giant hole there. Sabankaya also puffing to 27,000 feet. So let's take a look at Ruang. Ruang is a pretty violent uh, volcano here. Cinder cone, you can see strato volcano, my bad, with the top blown off. This is because of its explosive nature. The most recent eruption, 2002, was potentially VEI-4. Often blows at VEI-3 back in 1904 and in 1870. Limited knowledge starting in 1808 about the volcano, but it erupts at VEI-1, 2, 3, and potentially 4 or more. So we have some interesting activity, probably VEI 2 or 3 activity today to 30,000 feet. 
And we're keeping a close eye on Ruang because, well, we don't have much information other than what we just told you. Seismic activity uh, slightly elevated across all of Iceland, including Grimsvolten and Barabunga, Ashja, and the Reykjanes Peninsula. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you as well. Did you know a volcano in Antarctica spews out precious pieces of gold on a daily basis? Yes, it is quite a spectacular volcano. The ice cap region is home to 138 volcanoes nestled beneath the snow, 91 of which were discovered as recently as 2017. Whilst most of them are considered dormant or possibly extinct, three have erupted in recent history according to the Smithsonian Institution Global Volcanism Program, Penguin Island in 1905, Deception Island in 1970, and Mount Erebus in 1972. And it is Erebus that we're talking about here. It actually emits gold in its ash, Mount Erebus. The most extraordinary of all, these gusts of volcanic gases are worth their weight in gold, almost literally. This is because they are loaded with tiny specks of gold, measuring no larger than 20 micrometers. And all this gold is being deposited around the volcano in that snow, which would concentrate and make this a great gold mining opportunity at some point in the future, perhaps, when the volcano is safe to be around, which is now. It hasn't erupted since 72, so maybe there will be a gold mining operation in the near future. Quick look at space weather and that opening set of, take a look at that. That is a cannibal CME. The central one is the main one we're worried about. That was a halo CME sent out the other day. Uh, the other one is just a glancing blow, but together they could be quite a spike here late on the 17th, and that could send us into geomagnetic storm. Forecast to be G5 for two days, so just G1 geomagnetic storm, which we were already in now, but that has waned, and this geomagnetic storm was because of a phi angle flip here that occurred, uh, sending us into magnetic instability. Not much in the way of plasma speed, but the density did increase, but it was the magnetic fields that pushed us into that G1 geomagnetic storm, which is, by the way, now over, and in the next 24 hours, we're waiting for another one. If you remember, we reported on an object falling through a house in Naples, Florida. It looks like and has been confirmed uh, that those pieces were from <laughs> NASA. Yep. Oh, what is going on here? I'm frozen up. Objects that crashed into a Florida home came from the space station, and it is confirmed from NASA. I guess they'll be getting the bill. NASA also confirms Connecticut, and nine more states witnessed a spectacular meteor sighting moving at a crisp 38,000 miles per hour. The meteor tore across the northeastern sky Saturday night before flaming out over New Jersey. Leave a comment below if you saw the bolide in question. Fool's gold may be valuable after all it's not an unheard of discovery it's simply because of the stupidity of the electric vehicle market that we need lithium and they found that there may be high amounts of lithium easy to extract from pyrite fool's gold which is a sulfide mineral interesting all the links will be below graham hancock put out an interesting article yesterday well two days ago Gobegli Tepe, Gradual Evolution or Transfer of Technology or Both, where he goes over in great detail uh, some amazing stats and facts, including all of the ancient civilizations from the Upper Paleolithic to the late Aceramaic and the Neolithic from 6900 BC all the way back to 45,000 BC. Go check out the article. Lee and I will be discussing it on the radio show this weekend. And if you haven't heard, we are having a Crow Canyon petroglyph tour coming up in just about six weeks from now at the end of May on Sunday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Crow Canyon, New Mexico. We're going to be meeting in Bloomfield at the Salmon Ruins Museum parking lot. And then we're going to head out on one of the most amazing expeditions to see some of the most epic petroglyphs anywhere 
on earth. So please get your tickets now before it's sold out. And we did talk about the big scam of electric vehicles. You want to see what happens when two electric cars collide? Well, it is anything but environmentally friendly. Let's take a look. And that, well, that is a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. And we'll see you all, well, a few lucky ones in Crow Canyon. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Yeah.